Did Disney send children to Epstein's Island? Pretty dark, do you consider? Just because I had a, just a bit of a jarring experience here. What are your pronouns? What's your problem? If you are so upset about seeing a woman's body, you either belong in Saudi Arabia or you're gay. Or both. We will be celebrating fat liberation, body acceptance, and the power of being in fat community. With over 60 hours of programming spanning from policy, legislation. <sighs> it's good to be back. Welcome back to the Blair White Project podcast. It is the first episode of 2024. And I actually wasn't just doing nothing over the break. I was actually working. Over the course of, you know, late December to early January, I've filmed, I believe, four separate projects with different entities, different people that are going to be rolling out soon. That's I'm really excited about. One in particular, though. If you follow me on Instagram, which, hi, you should. I'll give you a second. But if you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen that I was out in LA for a little while filming a very special project. Like, definitely the coolest thing I've ever been a part of. It was... An insane honor it's very different than anything i've ever done when y'all see this it's going to be a whole game changer like i can't even explain to you but uh you know that's the future let's talk about the present this episode so twitter fireworks over big boobed influencer baking a cake i see y'all are still on your bullshit since i've been gone uh okay so if you don't know, Isabella DeLuca is a conservative influencer who got canceled by the right on Twitter over this video of her making a cake. And I have not watched this video, but I heard that it caused quite the stir. So let's watch it and see why everyone's so mad. I'm waiting. This is quite peaceful, actually. I'm wait. Does she is she putting poison in it? Like is she? What's the problem? Surely there's anthrax going in the mix or something immoral that would cause a stir like this. Okay, no, that's just the video. <sighs> People, conservative men in particular, are on Twitter calling her a harlot, saying that she's a whore, saying that this is basically soft core porn. You might as well start an OnlyFans. And my whole thing is, we are really porn sick as a society. I think people are so porn sick that they see porn in places that it's not. Because as far as I can see, she's wearing a top with zero cleavage showing. A plain t-shirt. And if it's the size of her breasts that are a problem, that's a bit out of her control, barring maybe their implants but even so that's her choice like listen there is a country wide open right that will take you in if you would prefer to live in a culture where you know women have to be covered and saudi arabia is there so you do have options here if you are just so angry and boned up over miss isabella de luca baking a cake people really tell on themselves so hard like my god you're calling this softcore porn that must mean you had a physiological reaction to it as if you're watching porn right that's on you that's on you baby but one thing i will say is men really can wank it to just about anything i mean i relate to isabella in a way because these you know boned up and angry conservatives that are in her comments calling her a harlot and calling her a whore are the same people that end up in mine. You know, the whole like, how can you be trans and on the right? How are you in a bikini? How are you dressed like that? Because I want to, and it's America, and I have freedom. That thing that y'all are supposed to be securing and fighting for. Remember, that's the whole point. Guess y'all forgot. Or maybe you never knew. I really don't like this because one of the reasons why conservatism and, you know, right wing thought was so unattractive to me as a child and why there was this huge bar of entry that I couldn't even get past to begin to hear them out was that they were so annoying. 
truly. And very, very Puritan, very like scared of sexuality, very scared of, you know, just, I can't even call this an example of sexuality. She's making a cake. And you know you have a perverse idea of what sexuality or porn is if you're seeing it in this. You, you, you're the one that's twisted. It's not her. So we're going to have to uh, reset that energy and look within. I know it's hard, baby. I know it's, I know it's so hard. I know it's so hard. But maybe there's nothing wrong with Miss Isabella DeLuca. And maybe there's something wrong with you. Just a thought. Maybe entertain it. I don't know. But, you know, that Puritan mentality that conservatives had way more, you know, throughout history. And then there was a brief window throughout the Trump era and a little after where they weren't as like weird about it and as Muslim adjacent about it. That was the window I loved. And that was the window that opened me up to voting a certain way. So if y'all want to just be so unattractive aesthetically and so like unappealing to I would say younger people but honestly just human beings in general that you think there is something ethically wrong with a woman wearing a t-shirt with no cleavage baking a cake if those are the kind of optics you want to put out into the world and make it look so goddamn lame so aggressive and so annoying to be on the right you can do that but you're not doing yourself any favors you're really not. This is why I so much more vibe with like a lot of the younger, like, you know, right wing conservative influencers who just aren't like lame. They aren't lame. It's America. Ding dong. If you are so upset about seeing a woman's body, two things. You either belong in Saudi Arabia or you're gay. Or both. But uh, while you figured that out, we're going to move on to FatCon, <laughs> the biggest fat celebration of the year. Coming to downtown Seattle. Girl, ain't nothing good happening in Seattle. Gotta say, it is a con what y'all are doing, but let's see what this is about. I'm going to FatCon in Seattle, Washington, January 5th through 7th, and I want to see you there. FatCon is a three-day fat liberation celebration, y'all. We will be celebrating fat liberation, body acceptance, and the power of being in fat community. With over 60 hours of programming spanning from... The power, if you will, of being in fat community. I just love how they take themselves so goddamn serious. I mean, wow. She really thinks she's the Rosa Parks of fatties. She's really the Harriet Tubman in her eyes of the fatties working that underground fatty railroad. And it is <laughs> amusing. But girl, get a grip. Programming spanning from policy, legislation, healthcare, community, and visual arts, plus a ton more. This is sure to be something you don't want to miss. Put it in the comments if you think I should show up with a fat suit do a little infiltration because I'm thinking that might be what I need to do. On another note, y'all know that clip um, that's been going viral of me all over the internet. Every time I log on to Instagram or TikTok, it's like millions, tens of millions of views, hundreds of thousands of likes. Just because I'm fat, that doesn't invalidate the things that I say. She died. <laughs> you ready to get supersized? She died too. <laughs> Today I got the big fruit loop. Yeah, that's it. He's dead. <laughs> Join the I Jesus love it. Christ. It's uh, real. People need to see that. It's one of the worst things. It's been so viral that Joe Rogan DM'd me and was like, people are really ripping you off right now. And I'm like, thanks. I know. I don't really know how to fix it. That's the internet. By the way, fun fact. I actually was not trying to be funny with that clip. There was not one drop of me that wanted that like cold open clip from the beginning of my video to be funny. <laughs> like those little dramatic sound effects. I put them in to be dramatic, babe. I didn't put them in to make fun of these people. It just so happens that I have, I guess, no self-awareness of how I come across. And so I can't actually gauge when I'm being funny or not because apparently it's like the funniest thing I've ever done. Speaking of fat cons, and the con that is being fat and happy about it, there is not enough to be said about how it is actually scary when you really wake up to how we are poisoned intentionally every single day by the people running the show. 
right? You look at the food supply, you look at uh, the air quality, you look at the pesticides, you look at, you know, the fluorides. Ooh, that word. Y'all get so mad. I remember when y'all were talking so much ish about the chemicals in the water making people gay or feminizing them or whatever. And my whole thing is there are studies that back it up. There are studies that back it up, babe. And this is my whole thing. I was saying this the other day to someone. Someone was talking about, so do you really think there are like chemicals in the water that make people gay or feminize them, trans, whatever? And I'm sorry. I'm not invested in having fake ass conversations about why I'm trans. I like to get to the root of things. I like to actually unpack things. I like to think deeply about things. And so part of that is, I wonder, maybe it is. Maybe at least part or maybe the whole thing, who knows? The reason why I'm trans is the chemicals in the water. Far be it for me to speculate on my own existence, right? Like, f me. And there are studies backing it up, but my whole thing is people need to learn how to trust their eyes and their ears and see what's around them. And I'm sorry, you can kind of observe the world and see that males in general quite feminized as opposed to what they used to be. Sperm counts are lowering. Like there's a whole trend on TikTok, why do Gen Z women look old? And when you learn about the effects of hormones, when you have too much estrogen, you be looking old when you're a woman, when you have overproductive estrogen. And then when you have less testosterone, you're looking younger and more feminized as a male. So I'm sorry, you can kind of just look up and see the world. You don't even need studies. But that's just one aspect of it, right? Like when you really wake up to like the food and the preservatives and the fluoride and the, you know, intentional poisoning and how we're being acted upon every day and how the intention is to keep us sick, really scary actually and it's 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 easier to be asleep about it so this is you know the extreme example people who are obese partly as a result of this intentional poisoning but that's the psyop of the poisoning that they get in your head they hypnotize you they get into you know messaging both subliminal and right in your face and tell you that being fat is healthy so you believe it and then your entire mind is warped and all of it is to keep you sick hi big farmer Hi, big food. Hi, government. Hi, World Economic Forum. Like, hi. And then when you understand the, you know, gut-brain connection, how what you eat and the chemicals that you ingest in your body have everything to do with your mental health. They're one and the same. They're connected. Like, that's when you realize they're not just trying to make you fat and die sooner. They're trying to make you mentally ill. They're trying to make you sick in the head. They're trying to keep you depressed. They're trying to crush the human spirit. And I'm sorry if I'm sounding dramatic here, but they really are. And from what I can see, being 30 years old now, I'm starting to see a whole lot of stuff play out about how there is a step-by-step -step process to crushing the human spirit, the human soul, what makes us us. And again, Fat Rosa Parks here is just the extreme example. There are tons of examples in society and we all fall victim to it. So just maybe not as much as this, right? So one of the things that I don't talk often about is how I actually went to school for nutrition for a while. It was my first major in college before, you know, I dropped out. Flopped. Fun fact, I also dropped out of beauty school. <laughs> beauty school dropout. But uh, when nutrition was my major, I actually was seriously considering doing it for a living because I was interested in food science and, you know, health. And one of the things that's really jarring to me is how literally almost everything that I learned over the course of, I believe it was like four semesters that I had nutrition as my major, almost everything I learned is completely spoken about in the opposite now. Everything I learned is good for you. It's now said it's bad for you. Everything I learned is bad for you. It's now said it's good for you. And that's only like a 10 year difference. So there are a lot of people very interested in keeping you sick. And it's just really scary, you know? The Epstein Files. Full list of high profile people named in unsealed documents. And I just have to say, the way the internet and commentators and society as a whole has been reacting to and handling this list has been quite disappointing. I've been a little disgusted with the amount of clickbait, the amount of deception about what's in the documents, what's not, the amount of like lack of care and throwing in names where they aren't deserved. So this is not a client list that has been released. And if you're under the assumption that a list of clients has been released, 
unfortunately, no, there are way too many people that need to be, you know, protected for that to happen, at least right now. So it's a list of around 150 people, associates that have been brought in for witness questioning. And one thing about court proceedings and lawsuits and all that is literally anyone can be used as a witness. Anyone you're associated with, it could be your friend from like second grade who you haven't spoken to. They can call anyone in. What I'm seeing is a lot of people like, oh, like Naomi Campbell's on the list and, and you know, Stephen Hawking. And they may very well be diddlers, like who knows? But you also have to, at this point, give enough grace to understand that not everyone on this list is guilty of the things that Epstein was doing, just like how not every associate and, and every person that Harvey Weinstein was in second grade with is somehow guilty of the same things he was doing as an adult. Direct character assassination. I've always said that I'm not a saint, that I am a work in progress, but I will not be held hostage by my past. What he's done is indefensible. And when I heard of what he'd done, it sickened me to my stomach, just like everybody else. Because I've had my fair share of sexual predators, and thank God that I had good people around me that protected me from this. I mean, right now I stand with the victims. It's, I can't, you know, they're scarred for life. For life. I've rubbed shoulders with um, hundreds of, or hundreds of thousands of people. There are levels to it, right? And y'all don't want to hear this, but sometimes you need to hear things that you don't want to hear. There's a big difference between the way that Trump is mentioned in the documents and Bill Clinton. And I really don't care if this you perceive this as me being partisan, as if y'all have not been partisan as hell about this, as if y'all have not been bloodthirsty beasts wanting Trump's name to be on some sort of client list. And uh, here's the thing. Bill Clinton is mentioned in the documents over 50 times and there are direct accusations. There are witnesses, there are victims that say that Bill Clinton did things to them. There are witnesses within these documents saying that Trump was not a diddler, that Trump did not participate in any of the actual of minors. By all accounts from what's been revealed so far, Trump has been cleared. More information could come out. And here's the difference between y'all little wokey, commie in the brain bitches and me. If Trump, it comes out and it is verified that he actually participated in these devilish things, guess where my support for him is going? Bye. Out the nearest window with a quickness, it's not even going to be a second thought. Now, we need to unpack why the entirety of the Democrat Party and entirety of the corporate press has defended every depravity at the hands of Bill Clinton, who has had a blind loyalty, this demented, devilish allegiance to Bill Clinton, no matter what he does, right? Y'all have been defending Clinton since before I was born. And he's always been a nasty motherfucker. He has. He was getting that under the desk in the Oval Office. Imagine being such a beast, such a boned up hillbilly that you need to get your rocks off in the Oval Office. People should uh, make mistakes but not be defeated by them. They should learn from them, they should acknowledge them, and they should go on. And that the rest of us uh, should always be willing to forgive other people's mistakes once acknowledged. So because we don't really know right exactly who's guilty guilty of everything who is an associate who was actually participating in this abuse of minors i don't want to necessarily focus on that so hard right now until we have more information i would like to shift gears to something else that i think people should be talking about a little more did disney send children to epstein's island pretty dark to consider right but yet and still you gotta start to wrap your head around the fact that the world that you were raised to believe is the world, the structures and the systems and the, you know, safety nets that you believed you had, that you were gaslit and brainwashed into believing that you had since birth, they weren't really ever there, baby. We have demons running this shit. Literally, at the tippity top, demons. I mean, I even question if there are actually, I'm not kidding. I don't care if I sound crazy. I actually sometimes consider if there are like, 
you know, beings that are like splices of human at the top running stuff. And maybe they have something else because as far as I can see, whoever's pulling the strings with how all this shit's going on, did you know that Disney allegedly sent children to Jeffrey Epstein's island? More possible than you think. The Disney cruise ship stopped at little St. James Island for day trips for years, despite Epstein's known history. So uh, if you don't believe me, it's actually still on the website. The Disney Cruise Line St. Thomas and St. John excursions. They would send kids snorkeling to Epstein's Island, Little St. James, which first of all, it's called Little St. James Island. I mean, thinking back to the time where people were denying this was a thing, it's like, it's in the name. It's in the name. It's demented, but it's in the name. And here's how our um, possibly devil ran corporate press says it goes. So fact check by Newsweek. Fact check. That must mean it's official, right? Did Disney offer cruises to Jeffrey Epstein's island? They say false. So they present all the information that people are pulling out. And then, which by the way, it's on the website currently that they sent kids to Epstein's island for snorkeling. And uh, Newsweek says, after presenting all the evidence, there are no credible sources saying that Disney Cruise Line vessels make stops or have ever stopped at Little St. James. That's their argument. They present the evidence that it happened, and then they say there's no credible evidence that it happened. They get off on lying in your face. They get off on lying in your face. So no involvement with Disney, but then you look up Ghislaine Maxwell, Disney, and you have all these pictures of her hosting an event at Disney. And I'm sorry, if you're not Hillary Duff and or Ashley Tisdale, I don't know how you end up hosting a Disney event. I mean, you gotta be pretty involved with them, right? And then there are pictures of Jeffrey Epstein at Disney where this man is holding this very clearly young girl who is also seen in pictures on the jet going to the island. So it's kind of like, if the argument is that Disney was not helping to funnel children to this demon island, I'm seeing a lot of evidence to the contrary of that. And in fact, it doesn't actually cut it Newsweek to say there's no credible evidence for it when, what is all this? What is all this? I mean, Ghislaine was all up in there. And see this scene from Pinocchio where they're talking about little boys who go to Pleasure Island. I'm collecting stupid little boys. Stupid little boys? You know, the disobedient ones, what play you give from school. Oh, and you see... And I take them to Pleasure Island. Ah, uh, Pleasure Island. Pleasure Island? Look at the law. Suppose they... No, no. There's no risk. They never come back as boys. <laughs> That's pretty terrifying. Does that definitively show that there was this Disney to Epstein pipeline? No, but when you start connecting enough dots, it just looked a little wonked, right? And it's not as if a network that is dedicated to children's programming is suddenly above reproach or above questioning because you look at Nickelodeon housing Dan Schneider for decades. You look at the fact that, you know, statistically, it's people that go into positions of power where they actually can influence or are around children that end up hurting them. Jared from Subway was involved in all these kids' charities and would go around speaking to charities, speaking to rooms full of kids. They get near their victims. That's how it works. And you know, far be it for me to be a thinking person, right? Far be it for me to look at their website, Live Loud and in Color, which says that they go to this island and then not necessarily be convinced by fact checkers saying that there's no proof of it when you can just go to the website, right? And then you see how much involvement they have with Disney. And it's kind of like, I, I, I don't know. Make up your own mind. But for me, that's some pretty dark stuff. That's some pretty dark stuff. Oh, God. This one is like 
demented as hell. White visitors to Vancouver Art Gallery can compare their faces to infamous Nazis. So if you're not aware, there is this truly sick and twisted art gallery in Vancouver funded by the Canadian government that uh, tells white people to stop talking, enjoy discomfort, check their privilege, vocalize their ignorance. It's basically just for the woke white libs who want to walk through and just need to feel something, you know, for the first time in their lives. And uh, they get abused by the exhibit and they, you know, get off on that because they're sick. Okay, so maybe you've seen this tweet about a new anti-white exhibit at the Vancouver Art Gallery. The exhibit is actually so much worse than this tweet, and I know because I went there. Predictably, it tells you to check your privilege. It puts a halo that says undeserving over your head. Stop talking, puts a mute button over your mouth. But then it gets downright schizophrenic. There's this exhibit display where it argues that because Roman and Greek sculptures had fluffy curly hair, they were not white. You are then afforded the opportunity to use the Aryan recognition tool and compare your facial measurements with the facial measurements of the leaders of the Third Reich. This incomplete timeline of the circumstances that influence the emergence and evolution of white racial identity tells white people that their identity is all about slavery, the KKK, colonialism, etc. The last item on it is the January 6th insurrection. Of course. Anyway, go read the full thing on True North. Y'all are really sick and twisted. This is disgusting. To make people feel potentially small children walking into this art gallery that their entire identity is made up of only the evils of their people. Their people. I don't even like the language their people. Like I understand being connected to your culture, but like for me, I've always just found it weird to even connect with like people that are not in your bloodline like directly and like you know, your family, like just the whole idea of like, answer for what black people do, answer for what white people do. It's like, y'all in that collective brain is just too much for me. I mean, fuck. most people today walk through life so desperate to be told who they are. They want it so damn bad. They have such a lack of identity that they want their, you know, search for who they are simplified and they just want to be told what they are. You're the oppressor you're the victim, you're being discriminated against, you're responsible for this. And it becomes their identity. But the difficulty in that is it is ripping apart society. The idea that there are children that are going to walk into this museum and be told that everything that makes them what they are amounts to only these evils of the past that have nothing to do with them. And then you have children of color in American schools being brought up that the sum of who they are is, you know, people who aren't them being victimized in the past. And they're not taught that that's something that they can overcome. They're taught that that's something that will always be present and it's part of their identity. But the problem with being told what your identity is, is that it's very hard to unglue from it. So the Dartmouth Scar Study was a study that brought a bunch of women together to go out on job interviews and they would put special effects you know, prosthetic scarring on their faces. The goal was to send them out and collect data on how people with facial deformities are discriminated against during job interviews. But last second before they actually left to go do the interviews, they touched up their makeup, the researchers, and they removed the scarring. They got rid of it, but they didn't tell the women. Amazingly, they actually came back and reported massive levels of discrimination. They reported that there were, you know, offensive comments made about them, that they were being treated badly. And they actually had direct quotes from the interviewers that they perceived to be discriminatory. And the moral of that story is you create your own reality. If you go into the world expecting to find discrimination, hatred, things stacked up against you at every turn, that's what you're going to find. That's the frequency that you're tuned into, baby girl. So that's the danger in raising millions of young people in this country and telling them that they are victims. That's all they're ever going to see. And that's the opposite of empowerment daddy teaches you you can be anything in this world that you want to be right don't daddy teach you that yeah and it doesn't matter if, if you're black or white or any color doesn't matter if you're black white brown yellow, yellow right black. and and how we treat people is based on who yeah. they are and not and what color nice. they are and if they're nice and smart see this is how this is how children think right here critical race theory wants to end that not with my children. It's not going to happen. 
My baby's going to know that no matter what she wants to be in life, all she has to do is work hard, and she can become that. Work hard even though you don't know anyone. You can make friends. <laughs> yeah, you can make friends, no matter what color they are. So we need to stop CRT, period, point blank. Children do not see skin color, man. They love everybody. If they're good people, they love them. We pray for people that are hurt. So then you have to ask yourself, why is there such a push in academia, in the school system, in the corporate press, in government, to feed people this narrative that they are victims? That the lump sum of their life adds up to victimhood? Because it's just another mechanism to keep you down, like syndrome. To give you that identity because they know that most people don't stray from the identity that they're given at a young age. And they package it in a way that gaslights you into thinking that you're being empowered, but they're really writing your story for you. And if you allow it to be told by them, you will always be a victim and you will never succeed in life. That's how it works. And it's sick and it's dark. And then y'all want to attack people who refuse to call themselves victims. I believe there's power in what you speak over your own life. There's power in what you call yourself. There's power in your own narrative that you tell yourself about your place on this earth. So it's pretty sick. And y'all are really some crab in the bucket ass bitches that someone like me doesn't identify with the word victim and I'm like a problem. That's sick. But uh, I'm not getting down like that. I'm not going down there in the bucket. I crawled my way out and I see that my life is what I make it. And that anyone trying to tell me that I'm a victim or an oppressor has an agenda that that's above me, baby. That's on you. Whatever fucking psyop you're trying to run on me, maybe you have it and it worked on you. So now you're trying to spread it, but no, thank you. Sending it right back to you. All that bullshit, all that simpleton thinking, you can keep it, babe. Don't want it. Being misgendered can be an incredibly like painful experience. I was really enjoying my um, demon-free holiday break, but clearly I should not have been gone that long because it seems as if the problem has expanded. It seems as if y'all don't really know how to clear these demons. So I'm back. I'll do it for you. It's fine. It's fine. But I do wish, you know, we could have a conversation about some kind of 401k for me because this is getting quite taxing. Hey, is it okay if I touch you? Yeah. Okay, cool. And what are your pronouns? They, them. She, they. I'm it's... glad we exchanged those. Yes. Okay. I'm glad that you came in today. So I'm okay if I touch you. Go right ahead. And what are your pronouns? He, him. She, her. Thanks Shocking. Thanks for asking yeah. earlier. Okay, Respect so. You. This is too much talking for me for a hair appointment. What are your pronouns? What's your problem? Better question. What's your problem? Way too much talking for me. And how do you expect to cut the hair without touching it, babe? Are we using gravitational waves like they did the fucking pyramids? Like, I don't understand. I don't think there's ever been a better time to reach over, grab a little coin, coin, a little dollar bill, and put it in the Blair White was right jar. Preferably this one. Hi, because this is what I've been saying all along. There's not a better example that I've seen in a long time that this obsession, this weirdo fixation that y'all have on pronouns out there in the world is clearly so much less about trans at this point that it's almost irrelevant. It's way more to do with y'all needing a goddamn personality and you're not even trans. This is a bunch of non-trans liberals participating in this weirdo ritual because that's what they want to do like if i was in the chair and miss thing asked me my pronouns i'm taking that as an insult so that's how you know this is not geared towards the like acceptance or to make trans people feel safe because i would be a little bit shook girl if you don't shut the fuck up and just cut that damn hair truly do the thing i paid you for sis because interrogating me about my gender is something I would find offensive. And I'm trans, so. We're doing this for you, narcissist. You're doing this for you, narcissist. You're not helping anybody. I see through you. 
Is that scary? Just started reading the Quran and I am so excited about it. People thought when I first asked that I just wanted to read it out of curiosity, but I want to read it to study it. I started following somebody on social media that teaches the Quran and hosts a Quran book club for Muslims and non-Muslims. So I'm really excited to start going to that. She was describing the chapter of the bee and that just blew my mind. Like the way that she describes things, the way that the Quran describes things actually makes sense to me. And also, did you know that Allah is beyond gender? You're beyond help. See, I have never seen anyone with such complex fakeness. I mean, your fakeness, your fake bitch energy is so multi-tiered. It's so meta that it's actually shocking. There are multiple layers. So first, you are appropriating being trans. So now you are appropriating being a trans Muslim and you are doing it from America. The same thing that a week ago, you said, We are in stage seven of genocide in America for trans people. I hate her. And I just wonder if America is a place that is so dangerous for trans people that it is a genocide occurring. What do you think is going on in Muslim countries? I mean, these are just the things I beg you to think about. And what about when adults employ misgenders you intentionally? So while, she's talk, while he's talking, you're talking. You just misgendered me again. <gasps> Multiple times. <gasps> Both of you have. Sorry. Wasn't intentional, but if you yeah. want to take it personal, that's also. Well, she did do it intentionally twice. Oh, you're talking to me too. You said she, and then you said he. You're being condescending, and if you want to continue, Ooh. I have full authority escort you out the building right this moment if you want to play that game with me. Okay. Would you like to continue three days before Christmas? I really don't mind. I'm good. I'll just put this on. You know, I would hate trans people if I wasn't trans. <laughs> My God. How dare you, bitch? How dare you sit up here and abuse a customer service employee and pretend as if it is not so visible that you are literally just in the midst of a narcissistic tirade that this has to do with you never having an ounce of power in your little tweedledum life and now he discovered this wonderful thing called trans and now he is able to use language to verbally abuse people in public and not be seen as a monster doing it you're a monster babe you're a beast you're a beast. Your behavior is beastie and that voice is real beastie too, which is why people might call you he. And you know that. You know that. You hear yourself. You played this back before you posted it. You heard that. He just was misgendered me. You heard it, right? And anyone with a bit of common sense can see that that misgendering that was on the camera was completely accidental. I'm sorry. This whole personal responsibility thing, I know y'all are allergic to that, but... If you don't want people to call you he, there are some steps you could probably take, right? And that has nothing to do with other people, right? I know that's a very foreign concept, right? But I'm just offering some solutions to your problem here. You're clearly in distress. Shout out to the man who did not let it go down like that and stood up for himself. He really ate with that. He was hungry. He was just scrolling before work that morning, saw some other weirdo trans shit, and he knew just what to say if he were to encounter in real life, and he did, and he ate down. <laughs> this is the frustrating thing for me. It's like these people who clearly just have a sick desire to abuse people and looked for a socially acceptable way to do it, trans, pronoun usage, found their method. Like, it would have been anything. Like, it's trans, but it would have been anything that worked. You know, these losers who are at the bottom of the totem pole of society. And, and he figured out how to get one notch higher on the totem pole. He figured out how to push one person down a little bit lower through words, through language, by, you know, attacking public service agents. There's a reason why it's so often people in public, right? Because these employees are, you know, held hostage by policies by these airlines and these companies in general that make it so they have to put up with your bullshit. But the only way to solve this is to keep looking crazy on camera. So thank you, sir, sir, sir. And thank you to the gentleman who stood up for himself. 
because like I said, he ate. Had it with the word blessed. I've had it. Yeah. No, I mean, I have that. had it up to my eyeballs. I'm out. A guy just delivered UPS and he handed me the box and he said, have a blessed day. And I just stood there with my jaw open thinking, does he not know that I don't like the word blessed, which of course he doesn't, well, but it how just irritates know? the, have a blessed day as opposed, why can't have we just have a, have a good day? day? Right. Have a good Who day. Who the fuck is out there blessing my day? <laughs> a blessed day? What the fuck does that mean? Right. Bless your heart, baby. You know, I'm someone who believes in self-love, but if you have centered yourself so hard that you can even fix your crooked, frankly, need a little Botox face to mouth the words, doesn't he know I don't like the word blood? No, he doesn't, Karen. He doesn't because he doesn't know you and he's trying to be nice and you're such a demon that like it just burns I cannot. He could have said, fuck you, girl. He could have noticed that little wrinkle crinkle on that face. And he didn't. Or at least he's a good enough person to not mention it. Far better than me. But my God, when you behave so ugly, it's like you start to notice all the little crinkle wrinkles. You start to notice. Y'all ever like someone and then they do something a little fucked up or rude and it's like you have a snaggle tooth i did not notice did not notice that breast kicking a little bit too and that tooth might actually be dead the closer that i look and yet i didn't even see it until i realized you were a cunt. that's the power of being a nice person or at least just not this goddamn insufferable calm down karen calm down just because I had a, just a bit of a jarring experience here. Um, I went I went into the bank. I was trying to change my name on my account, which apparently I can't do because my ex and I still have a joint account. So my ex needs to be present so I can change my name and it reflects on both accounts. Regardless of that, um, the girl who was doing it had a question and she she calls her coworker over like well he's trying to change his name on his account and i'm i'm like she she kind of like looks at me a little bit and is like oh i'm sorry and just like writes it off but like i'm just like you read both names like she had both my ids and my legal name change paperwork in front of her so, um, you know what my name's going to. Number two, I look and sound like this. I know I'm six feet tall, but girl, come on. I'm wearing a dress. I am wearing a dress. I am wearing makeup. I'm wearing eyeliner. And I Bitch, I can't even look at you directly in the eyes through the screen. I am one that often says Delulu is in fact the Salulu. You got to be delusional about your dreams and your goals, baby. But that that's a different level. It, it truly is. You look like someone whose wife is missing. You look like Jeffree Star with a bath salts problem. And perhaps her misgendering you is just a result of her being so shook by your offensive presence that any word just came out. I mean, I would have just started word vomiting. Just get me out of this situation, especially considering I can smell the rotten breath from here. All that energy you allocated towards changing the color of your hair, we're gonna allocate just a little bit of it to making your teeth a different color than yellow. Step one to not having to endure uncomfortable social interactions is not walking into it with your mouth looking like that. Because once you address your overall threatening aura and or aroma, you might have different outcomes and you might find that you're avoiding awkward social interactions. Because for me, if you walked up in my space, I might have used any kind of word. Moving on. She said her black friend's mom won't allow her to go over her white friend's house. First off, it's not racism. I probably wouldn't address it the same way as this black mom. But I definitely understand and see that's the problem. 
Y'all don't want to teach critical race theory because y'all don't want to understand. It was easy for you to just get on the internet and call it racism because you didn't even know what racism is. The reason why I have some type of apprehension about letting my child come over to your home because you probably have not taught your child right from wrong. Your moral compass is kind of thrown off. I don't know if it's a white man laying around the house. <laughs> I don't know if she got a big brother named Billy and he might be wondering. You know, some of us in life manage to live out this entire experience on this planet with our head in the dirt and never really make an attempt to pull it out, see what's on the surface, right? This woman is a very clear example. I mean, you are exactly what's wrong with society, man. First of all, if you do not have a immediate, you know, sad reaction. For me, I feel like you're kind of a demon. If you look at this little girl crying that she can't go to her black friend's house because her black friend's mother is racist. Yes, it is racist. Sorry. And you don't have like, a sadness that fills you like, wow, look where society is. And you immediately go to excusing it. You're a racist. And I mean, what a sad existence. You're just pitiful. That's really some pitiful shit. You are really sad. And this is why y'all need to stop calling them progressives and call them what they are, which is regressives, right? If there is a movement for holding, you know, Black only graduations, people of color only graduations, separating them from the white kids and calling that anything but segregation, POC only spaces. If you're on the side of my child can't go to a white person's home and it's sad to think that we'll have to undo all this other shit, right? Y'all just creating more racism from a different perspective. Happy Friday, but can I ask you a serious question? Here comes How Sarah. 2023 and this i'll show you in a minute is what we are saying the majority of families look like this this is the oh no majority families oh no don't get me wrong there are families like that and really those families have plenty of things dedicated to them movies and books and holidays and all the things why, like, if we're really getting serious about what people think teachers are doing in the classroom, why is that, why is that on a book? Who is we? You f***ing robot. You f***ing robot. Robot Rebecca. Who is we? Beware of simpletons who use the pronoun we. They are literally like, do you even have a soul? Like this whole speaking as a collective, speaking as a, as a group, it's like, my God, I refuse to be tainted with your stupidity simply by being caught up in your we that you so freely throw around. Now I'm really being misgendered because there is no we, ho. There is zero problem with showing other types of families in art, in, you know, media, life reflects art, art reflects life. Got it. However, is there nothing to be said about the fact that Perhaps we still live in a country where the majority demographic is going to look a certain way and simply by virtue of like it being the majority means that that would also reflect the art. See, maybe you want a disproportionate or incorrect reflection of what families look like. That's clearly what you're arguing for, but you know, it's a little bit stupid. I've never understood that. I hate the whole like, endless seeking of representation in media and in in art it's like it was absolutely at a certain point a problem that there was like such little representation of other races other cultures other whatever it's like that was actually a problem and it was actually addressed but this is the problem with libs is there all breaks no gas it's like they're never actually going to find an end or a solution to a problem they're just going to find a problem and pretend as if it persists forever so at what point are you creating a false reality and creating a situation where it appears as if the majority of the country doesn't look like that when in fact that they do? They do. You're goofy, Gretchen. 
you're goofy and you need to get a grip. 